How's it going? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be making an old sort of 80s style interface or uh, dashboard here. And everything you're seeing here is done procedurally in the nodes, all these materials. If I press play, it animates really nicely. We got some of these gradients going on. We got some fun stuff, something right. So let's get into how to make this kind of interface. Now you can render this in EV or cycles. So whatever one you want to use, almost everything here is going to look exactly the same. Uh, except for some of the bump nodes, you're going to have to invert them, but we'll get into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to en enter a plane and then I'm going to go, I'm going to hit the tilde key up here to the top, go to the very top, hit shift A, add my camera, control alt zero, snap it to view, and we're going to make this fit to our camera view. So I'm just going to hit S to scale it up and just kind of have it fit right there. And then we're going to go and scale him out this way. So now we have this, we're going to hit control A and apply scale. So I'm going to hit tab, right click, and I'm going to subdivide him. And I'll say I'll subdivide him by, we'll go with 30. So now we're going to do this. Now, here's the part where you can decide where you want your screens to be located. So I would look up some inspiration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit tab here. I'm going to go up here to face select. I'm going to hit click one to deselect them. Hit C, and I'm going to start mapping out how I want how big I want my screen. So I'm just going to roughly do this. This isn't going to be exactly like the reference. If you want the reference that I showed you, you can get that project file in the description for a dollar. Uh, but we're just going to quickly mock it up kind of like this. Let's say I'll bring it over like that and then reduce one. Okay. So now we have that one. We're going to go up and make another one. This one's going to be more square. So we're going to start here start down here and we are mocking up how to do this all right so now these now that you have how you want your screens to look what we're going to do is now that you have these selections I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to bring my net mouse down just like that to bring my screens in now we need to bevel these insides so what we're going to do is we're going to do that manually so we're gonna go up here to edge select and click on an edge. Now hold down alt so you can get that whole edge and select all of the edges by holding down shift and alt to select more. So once you go to the next screen, make sure you're holding down shift and you're selecting every edge just like this. Now do that for all your screens. All right, so now that you have all your edges selected, we're gonna go over here to the bevel section, the bevel button I mean, and you're just gonna click and hold it down and you're going to bevel it just eyeball it how you want it to look so i'm gonna go right about there release and now we have some nice beveled screens so now we can start making and mapping out how we want our buttons to be and where we want them to be located so i'm hit shift a and we're going to go ahead and add in a cube and then i'm going to go ahead and just squish him just like that and i'm going to scale it down and this is right about how big i want my buttons to be and we're going to position them whoop lost track of what i'm doing here and we're going to position them. First, we need to decide how we want these buttons to be shaped. So I'm going to hit Control A and apply the scale. We're going to go to the modifiers and we're going to add in a bevel modifier. And then I'm going to just play with the width here. So right about that. And then on segments, I'm going to give it four, right click and shade smooth. And now we have a nice button. Now what you can do is hit Shift D, duplicate them and just put them around your scene however you want them to be uh, positioned. All right, so now one thing that will help you when you're in Blender and playing with a bunch of objects is playing with matte caps. So if you go over here, if you're in just the solid material, I mean, no, no non-material view, the viewport shading, hit this little down arrow, click matte cap, and then click random. And now you're going to be able to see your, your objects and stuff much easier when you're positioning stuff. It doesn't get lost in this view. All right, so now I have these buttons here. So let's go ahead and start making the material for these buttons. First, I'm just going to go ahead here on the big piece, click new, make this material metallic and make it a bit darker so we can see things much clearer. So we're just going to click one here and let's go to the shading tab up here and um, get this guy shaded. So we're going to click new and then here on the principle, I'm going to make it right down here, transmissive and the roughness down a little bit. And then we're going to bring him over and add in a mix shader right here. And then we're going to add in an emission. Bring him over here. Position doesn't really matter. 
So right now you could just make it a emission, right? But you can see on the buttons that they kind of glow from the middle and branch out. So we're gonna be adding a gradient texture to them. So first off, let's just make it yellow how we want or any color you want, doesn't matter. We're gonna add in a gradient. So first what we're gonna do is add in a color ramp. And we're gonna bring it back here because we are gonna be plugging it into somewhere else later, but plug in the color to the factor. Let's get that gradient texture right here. Now go into the uh, preferences here in the add-ons and make sure node node wrangler is enabled. So when we go to the gradient texture and hit control T, adds that there, go to the object coordinate, plug that into the vector. Now right here on linear, change it to spherical. So it'll have it in the middle. And then on the, on the color ramp, change it to linear to B spine. So we get a much smoother gradient. And as you can see, now it's working but it's not very bright at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a brightness contrast node. And before we do that, we need to plug this into the strength and add that brightness contrast node right here in the middle of the strength. So when we bring up the brightness, bring up the contrast, we get a little bit better looking um, button. And then right here on the back, if it's not as bright as you want it here on the corners, just bring that gray up a little bit and you bring up that brightness, bring up the contrast and we get a nice looking button. Now all you have to do is select all your cubes. We'll just preview it here on the bottom, hold down shift, and then click the last one, control L, link materials, and now they'll all be linked. All right, so now we have all my buttons and you'll wanna be adding other buttons around just to make your interface look nice. Now, you can see in the animation, we have this really cool dot animated thing. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hand this part of the tutorial over to Syncratic 3D and he'll show you how to make that. But before I show you that, I need to show you how to apply this thing he's gonna show you to your um, interface. So what you'll do is go to edit mode. Now pick the screen that you wanna use. So it'd be this one. So I'm gonna hit C and pick all the faces there. And then you'll go to your material section here, click a new one, click a new material, go back into edit mode and click assign. And it's gonna assign that material to the uh, material that you're gonna be designing. So whenever you're in the shading, tab, make sure you have slot two in this case uh, selected so that you are editing this, um, this material right here. Hey everybody, this is Taylor Brown with Syncretic 3D. All right, before we start out, let's turn on the Node Wrangler add-on in the preferences here. Node Wrangler, because you'll be using that quite a bit. And make sure to follow along by using by watching the uh, screencast case over here. Let's add a new material to this plane here. Call it grid it dots. Let's add a Volnoy texture. Press Control T to add a texture setup. Control T. Use the object coordinate here. Press Control Shift and left click to view the node. Take away the randomness. Now it's in a grid, let's add a color ramp here. Change the interpolation to constant. Move the slider back, just a bit. Change the scale to something like 50. Let's add a noise texture right here. Let's make this 4D, take away the detail level. Change the scale to something like one. So mix these two together. This factor controls the intensity and this slider controls the thickness. And this is why Ducky3D has asked me to come down from the heavens, charming him with gifts from up above. While you're on this video, make sure to unsubscribe from Ducky3D and subscribe to me. All right, we're back. So we have created this thing right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change up a little bit of the nodes right here on the principled BSDF. We're gonna delete that. We're gonna add in a mix, mix shader, plug that into the surface, and we're gonna add two emission nodes. So let's add right here, EM emission. We'll make one a very bright green We'll shift D, duplicate it, and take that same green and bring it real dark. 
So we're gonna plug those into the sh two uh, shader sockets right here, and then right here on the color ramp, plug that into the factor. So now we have these dots, and I'm gonna bring the brightness of this green one up just a bit, change the scale of our dots. And one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the noise texture here, take off this texture setup. I'm gonna hit Control T to give it its own texture setup so that we can squish. So we're gonna put an object coordinate there. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna squish the, uh, the noise texture to get what I want. So that would be on the X, the uh, X scale here on the Voronoi. I mean, sorry, the noise. And one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this guy up. Now we're gonna animate this to loop, uh, looping animation. So we're gonna take this here, duplicate it, put that scale back to one, and we're gonna plug this mapping node here into the W. So what that's gonna do is allow us to make a nice animation when we rotate, I believe, on the Z. So when we rotate it on the Z, we're just gonna get a nice animation. So I'm gonna bring up my, uh, my timeline here. I'm gonna give myself 120 frames. We're gonna right click on the, let's see if any of them else look better on the animation. None of them really matter. Okay, so here on the Z, insert keyframe. We're gonna to go to the very end and then hit the right arrow to go to frame 121. And we're gonna type in 360 to rotate it at 360 degrees to get a perfect loop. And now we're gonna get a nice little dot grid animation that looks really, really cool. All right, so now we have our dot grid. We're done with that portion. Let's go ahead and make the next thing, which is gonna be the uh, this blocky thing right here on the animations. Just doing that right there, very simple. So that's done with a brick texture. For those of you who know, you should, some of you probably recognized it already. So we're gonna do the same thing. Select all the faces that we want to be our screen, just like that. Make a new material, new, and then assign it. And let's go over to the uh, shading tab again. And then take this here, delete that. We just need one emission node, plug that into the surface. Color ramp right here, plug that there to the color. Now let's get in our brick texture. Brick texture, hit Control T on that brick texture and change it over here to the object node and plug that brick texture there. So now we have this situation. Let's bring the scale up, something like this. Let's bring that offset all the way to the side and brick width, I mean, sorry, row height, make it match the brick width, which here is 0 0.5. So we have nice little squares. Now. Let's go to the color ramp here and pick the two colors we want. So I'm gonna go with that nice green and we're gonna go with an orange right here. And then right over here, let's bring this guy over, add another one by hitting the plus icon and bring it over and make that all the way black so that the mortar size here is that black. So and then we'll bring it over like that, make it linear to constant here. So we get those two colors we want. So now we have this. Now what you wanna to do to stylize is just play with the brick width brick height, things like that. Maybe play with the, uh, the the squash, I believe. The squash kind of plays with that. And now all I did to animate it was I did that on the color ramp. So let's bring him back some. And I brought him here. And then I played with the green. So we'll start the green here. We'll go to the end of our timeline. Right click on POS or the position. Insert keyframe. If you can't see the keyframe, just click on the color ramp and you can see it. Go to the very end, hit the right arrow insert keyframe again, go to the middle, and then bring them all the way there, insert keyframe. So now we have a nice little animation doing that, and it's nice. And if you wanna play with the uh, size between, you can play with the mortar size, so you get something like that. So we get some better little, some better little blocks. All right, now let's go down here. So we're gonna select all these, same story, it's just a lot of repeating when it comes to making these screens. New material, assign it still in the node editor. So we're gonna make the uh, wave. So let's delete this, mix RGB, sorry, mix shader, plug it into the surface, two emission nodes, duplicate them. Now we're gonna make this one red, pretty dark, and make this one orange, make it pretty bright, maybe 14, and plug that into there. Bring the mix shader up, add in a color ramp, plug that into the factor, wave texture right there. Plug the wave texture here into the color ramp. Hit Control T, object coordinate, and go from uh, bands, which are straight, 
two rings which are now circular. Now the center of the circle is not where we want it. So we're going to hit shift A and we're going to add in a empty. Let's go out of edit mode first. Sorry. Um, so we're going to add in an empty right over here and then place that empty where you want the center of your circle to be. So we're bring it right here directly in the middle of our composition. Now here on the texture coordinate, go and pick that empty. So which is right there. So now when you move around that empty, it'll move around that circle and it's super cool. Now let's go back to the material, make it linear to constant, bring that in and then play with the size. And then you can animate that as well. Super cool and super fun. So now we have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these three nodes right here. I'm going to hit control C. I'm going to go over here, hit tab, select these just like that. And then new material, assign it. And I'm going to delete, delete this. I'm going to hit control V to paste in those nodes right there to the surface. And then right here, we're going to add in, in a wireframe wireframe node, plug the factor into the factor, and then play with the size like that. I'm going to swap out these two. And you can play with the width of that wireframe node. So now we have this, and then we can play with the color. Say I'm going to make it that green, and of course the dark green right there. And then for the last one, I want to add that same animating look. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the this animation right here. I'm going to copy the whole thing except for the material output right there. I'm going to hit control C and then over here go ahead and select everything. Just like that. And then we're going to delete this guy. Control V. If you hit G you can move them all together. And we're going to put paste that there. And then we're just going to change the colors to the red and orange. So now we have some pretty cool stuff. The last thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how I made these uh, these sort of pro progress loading bar looking things and well as well as this uh, material over here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new screen. So I'm going to hit tab. Alright, so I'm going to select this section right here and I'm just going to extrude it. I'm not going to worry about beveling it just to show you guys how this works. So hit tab new, new, assign. And then let's do this uh, material here. So what I want to do is add in a gradient. So I'm going to make this right here trans transmissive, bring down the roughness. Mix RGB. Sorry, mix shader. I keep saying that. I'm sorry. Uh, emission right here. Bring him over here. Color ramp. And we're going to add in a gradient node, but it will not be a spherical one. So GR, gradient texture, control T to object. Plug that there. So if we're bringing the color ramp, we're not going to see anything really much happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in an empty right here, plane axis. And we're going to start, put the empty where we want the gradient to start, which is right there. We'll go back object coordinate, go to the end and click that new empty. And now it's going to be doing that. So what we're going to do is on the Z, just, we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then we can play with that process bar. We're going to go to uh, constant here and bring it up like that. It's being a little bit weird. So we're going to take the empty and control the gradient here. So if you just got to, you have to play around with it till it meets the empty right around there playing with this uh, empty here and it should control the gradient and then you can just animate that. All right, so last material we need to make is this big one. So let's go back to the materials, click the first metallic material we made and let's start playing with that roughness first. So let's go ahead, shift A, color ramp directly into the roughness. So let's do the roughness right there. Add in a musgrave. We're going to hit control T for that texture setup, bring it to the object, must grave into the factor. Now we have all this craziness. Bring the dimension down to zero, your detail all the way up to 16, and then lack of nority. You're going to play with that and then bring your scale about to where you like it here. And now we have 
some really nice roughness. I'm going to take the black portion of the color ramp and bring it up so some of the roughness meets it so it's not completely glossy on the black portions. Now we're going to add some dents. So B U M P, bump node, plug it into the normal. We're going to get a Voronoi, Voronoi texture, the distance here on the height. And we're going to add in a color ramp here, plug that there. Of course, Control T for a texture setup, object node. And then we're going to bring the color ramp in a little bit. And we're going to change the Lucidian to, I believe, Chevy Chev. All right, yeah. So now we have this. We have all these, these dents and stuff, which really looks cool on its own. But we're going to go and mess with that here on the mapping, uh, the texture coordinate right here. Because right now they're just too plain or they're not detailed. We're going to add in a noise texture right here. Add in a mix RGB right there. We use the object coordinate here to the color too. So what that's going to do once it loads here is bring the factor all the way over. We have the original node and then right here, bring the detail all the way up on this noise texture. And then we're just going to bring it over till we get some nice dents all over our guy. Bring the scale over some like this, bring over the color ramp, just like that. And then bring the strength down on our bump node as well. So right now it looks like they're shooting up. They look like bumps rather than dents. We'll just click invert. And then now we have these dents and cuts in our old interface and we're pretty much done. You can go in and add in whatever other design features you would like to use. And it nice animates. You can play with some of these. Say I want some of these to be off. So you just delete that, add a new one, transmission, roughness down, and then bring it really dark. So some of these buttons can be off. So you go in, have a lot of fun playing with design, playing with animation, and there you go. Thanks for watching.